Greg Wormuth along with WFTV legal analyst Bill Schaefer. We're getting set for our next witness being called to the stand. And uh, again, looks like Mark O'Mara went outside to grab that individual and we will go back to courtroom 5D. But an interesting testimony from uh, our latest witness and Bill, they were trying to get her to break on in, in terms of that uh, ill will and spite regarding the use of that language on the phone. Uh, they were, but they certainly far from succeeded in doing that, Greg. Back to courtroom 5D. You may proceed. Thank you. Sir. Good morning, sir. How are you? Just fine. Let's state your name, please. John Donnelly. And your occupation? I'm a retired physician's assistant. Uh, now I do litigation support for uh, attorneys and law firms and medical malpractice. Okay. Tell me what a physician's assistant does. Uh, <clears throat> physician assistant basically uh, augments a physician's uh, services in MD. Uh, I was trained in trauma surgery and uh, internal medicine. How long um, had you been a PA? That's, that's the normal term? Is that PA? <clears throat> yes, since uh, 1973. Okay, can we use that term as we go forward, a PA, and we yes, know sir. what we're talking about? Great. Since 1973, and when you say that you trained in trauma, what do you mean by that? Uh, major trauma, uh, auto accidents, gun wrecks, I mean gunshots, stabbings. Uh, it's at Emory University uh, in Atlanta, and I trained mainly at Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta. And uh, you know George Zimmerman? Yes, sir. And how do you know him? Uh, George Zimmerman is a friend of mine. I've known him for since about 2002, 2003. Uh, he's just a very good friend of mine. We um, have just heard from your wife, obviously. Probably passed in the hallway. Um, so I'm going to abbreviate some of your testimony in that regard. But um, if you would tell the jury the, um, just a bit about your friendship with both George Zimmerman and his wife, Shelley Zimmerman. Uh, we met George. Uh, my, my wife is a real estate uh, broker, and she owns her own business. And we had an office in a building. Uh, kind of a one-story ranch-type building, Lake Mary Boulevard, and the insurance company was in one side and her real estate office was in the other side. I have my own business and uh, my wife had an extra room in there, so my office was right next to hers and uh, we get along pretty well, so that worked out uh, very well for us. And we have worked right next to each other for 15 years now. Okay. Would you? Sure. Um, would you just give us a, a feel for how the friendship between yourself and Mrs. Zimmerman and or his wife has grown over the past several years? Uh, our friendship really uh, started uh, with uh, George all times coming to our offices. We always had refrigerators full of sodas and food and microwaves. Uh, George uh, took care of a lot of our insurance policies. All of our policies are, are with the insurance company. Uh, George helped us out a lot with that. Uh, we just got to be uh, good friends with George. Uh, uh, he was just a very smart, sharp young guy, and uh, he'd just stop in, especially a lot of times after work, where we'd be there till 7 o'clock or so, and George would, would come in and sit and talk with us, especially about uh, business and stuff. He was very interested in, in business and starting his own business and how we, we were doing. Uh, and we just got to be very close to him. Uh, one time he came in and uh, asked me to show him how to tie a Windsor knot in a tie. Uh, and that just uh, touched a very little personal part of my heart. And, and he's always been there ever since. So we credit you for the tie he's wearing? Yes, sir. OK. Matter of fact, we can probably credit you for more than just the tie, I understand. Is that correct? 
Do you help him with some clothing to get ready for his trial? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I took George down, and uh, I believe I bought him and three I'm suits. Sorry, let me interrupt you because I didn't tell you as well. We're very used to talking in familiar terms with our friends, George, Mark, whatever. In the courtroom, we need to use full surname so that not only the record is clear, but the formality of the courtroom. So I apologize for not mentioning that to you earlier, but yes, when you mention George, please tell us his full name, okay? Yes, I, I uh, took Mr. Zimmerman down to uh, a clothing store and uh, I purchased him uh, suits, ties, shirts uh, for a courtroom. Uh, uh, it, it's, I've been in and out of courtrooms many times not testifying, uh, which can be a terrifying experience. Uh, but I've been taught by, by my attorney clients that when you come to a courtroom, you, you dress to, out of respect. For and the that, was one of the, sorry, that was one of the ways you supported him, helping him out with some clothing? Yes, sir. You've also donated um, money to his legal defense fund, have you? Yes, sir. Okay. And you consider him a friend? Very close friend. Um, have you tell the jury um, sort of the spectrum of voice that you've heard about George from conversational tones to laughing or yelling or whatever you have as your sort of experience level for his voice? Uh, yes, I have very close experience level with his voice, both in casual conversation, uh, uh, laughing, lunches, dinners. Uh, we were in several political campaigns for much my feet still hurt. <laughs> uh, and uh, George and I would be holding up signs and yelling and so forth uh, during the campaigns. Okay. Um you had not listened to the, what we now call the Lauer 911 call uh, until recently, is that correct? Yes. When you were, before you studied um, to become a PA, had you had any medical experience before that? Uh, I was a combat medic in Vietnam. Explain what that is. Uh, you're rendering medical aid uh, to your men that are hurt, injured. So it, it, go through, if you would, uh, and um, apologize to the extent we'll bring you back to that. But within, with that as a, as a premise, if you would explain to the jury what a normal day is in the life of a combat medic in Vietnam. <clears throat> Well, if everybody will give me a little patience here. Uh, when you're in the Army, you're with 60, 100 men. Uh, you eat, sleep, shower uh, with them on a daily basis. Oftentimes, you're sharing your bunks with them. Uh, I got in Vietnam in December 67, and uh, through I December. I apologize, sir. I'm going to object as to relevance. Um, please approach. that these are just friends coming to his defense. Well, certainly the prosecution is going to want to uh, to argue that, but there's something, that, oh, I think, even a little more subtle going on here, Greg. I think you were saying that you'd gotten there in 1967? Uh, I got there in de December 1967. And how long were you there? To uh, December of 1968. So approximately a full year? Yes, sir. Um, and were you there as a medic the entire time? Yes, sir. So um, you were telling us that you basically are, how many medics are there available for these 60 to 100 men in the group that you were telling us about? Uh, there could be uh, two to four uh, based on what the mission was uh, you know, for that day. Uh, generally, you, you try to have at least two available for uh, a full company of men, which could vary from 40 to 60, depending upon availability. Okay. And then the medics are responsible, obviously, for the medical care 
for the um, combat troops? Yes, sir, for the men who get wounded and, and hit. Now, when we talk, is company the right term? I, you know, uh, there's troops com and companies and battalions. Companies, I, well, there's squad, company, platoons. Uh, basically, uh, you might be in a, a squad search and destroy. You might be in a full platoon search and destroy. You might be in a full company. Okay. The, the 60 to the 100 combat soldiers that you were working with, can we come up with a term so that we know what we're talking about? Can we call that the company? Yes. Or, okay. So, even though it might not be precisely accurate according to the U.S. Army, for our purposes, we'll call that group of combat, and it was mostly it was men back then in the 60s, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, let's call them combat men of that camp company. Okay? Yes, sir. So you, maybe one to three other medics were responsible for the medical care of that company? Yes, sir. These were, were these people that you would be with throughout the day and throughout the week and the month and the year? You're with them through the day, through the night. You're with them at all times. Um, have an opportunity to talk to them and interact with them? Uh, yes, sir, when you were back at base camp, uh, that's all you did was really take care of your equipment and talk and, you know, the scuttlebutt that goes on in, in the military, uh, mess halls and, and so forth. Uh, you talk all day long because there's really nothing else to do. Until the combat begins. And until you get sent out on a mission, yes, sir. Okay. During those times and with all of those men in the company, did you have an opportunity to talk to them both conversationally and, and what other forms of communication, yelling, screaming, laughing, anything like that? Well, obviously the, the casual conversations, uh, laughing, joking, sometimes drunken after a 90 degree beers. Uh, but once you got into combat, then of course the voices change so you, so you had a chance, and I'm, I know the timing isn't going to be right, but you would interact with the soldiers during the day, correct? Yes, sir. Presuming that the missions were at night, and I know that wasn't always true, but for our purposes, hanging out with them during the day, missions might occur at night, is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you then have an opportunity where you would have to when do you do your work? What happens that causes you to now have to be a medic and do something? Uh, well, at base camp, you took care of the normal routine medical issues that come up from colds or uh, people lacerations or anything else that happens. Once you're in the field, uh, and once you get into combat, and in 1968, I think uh, everybody remembers that was the Tet Offensive. Uh, it started the uh, end of that January, and you could be fighting in the field for five, ten days straight. Uh, Did you then have an opportunity as a medic to have to attend to people that you knew during the day as they were wounded in combat? Yes. And tell the jury about that. <clears throat> it's a little difficult. Well, let me, let me, if I might, we, let me, I was just going to sort of see if I, I could lead him. There's been a request to approach the bench. I don't know what it's about. Yes, ma'am. Please approach. A lot of folks on the blog, more than 8,000 strong right now, are asking what does this have to do with anything? The fact that George Zimmerman must be a good person. George Zimmerman couldn't have done the act with ill will spite that the uh, prosecution is trying to say that he did. Sabrina Fulton has just gotten up and left court. We don't know if that's for any particular reason other than quite possibly, Bill, this is the first morning we have had where they haven't taken that 10.30, 10 10-minute 10 recess. The sidebar is now over. Again, we're approaching the lunch hour. Let's see how much longer this witness, John Donnelly, a physician assistant and whose wife, Leanne Benjamin, testified, continues on the stand. I think we were talking to you about 
your opportunity to interact with the soldiers on a daily basis and then sometimes having to go out to deal with them after being wounded in combat. With that as a premise, tell me about you would be called out to do what? Uh, in the midst of combat, uh, there are a lot of people yelling, screaming. Uh, sometimes they're yelling, barking out orders. Other times they're yelling for ammo. Sometimes they're yelling for a medic. And sometimes they're screaming for help. Okay. And um, based upon the year that you spent doing that, were you able to distinguish the yelling for help, or the asking for a medic, um, and compare that to those people that you had heard the day or the day of or the day before in regular conversational tone? When uh, you're in a combat situation like that, in the, in the den of battle, uh, for some reason I, you develop uh, I'm not sure what you would call it an ability, but when you hear that, you can distinguish the screams for help, distinguish the screams for a medic, you grab your rifle, you grab your medic's kit, and your job is to run. You go to where they're at, but invariably, because you know your, the men you're with, you know the men that you eat, sleep with, you know who it's going to be before you get there. And you can tell that from hearing their voice screaming for help and comparing that to what you heard in your everyday life with them? Yes. Okay. Um, I had started this a moment ago by talking to you about the evidence in this case and whether or not you had listened to the um, phone call, the 911 call in this case. Um, had you listened to it, or when was the first time that you listened to it? Uh, I had heard pieces of it inadvertently, uh, listening to the news or whatever, and I generally tuned it out and walked away. I really didn't want to. Uh, why? Tell the jury why you didn't want to listen to this tape. Uh, it can be very uh, distressing. To listen to a friend of yours scream for help, if in fact it was a friend of yours? Yes. And is that why you didn't listen to the tape? That's why. But you have listened to it recently, is that correct? I listened to it uh, on this past Saturday morning, sitting in my office alone. And uh, I found it on the internet somewhere, and I played it exactly twice. I'm going to play it for you again, if I might. This is the tape that is in evidence. I'm not sure what you listen to on the internet, but I'm going to ask if you would listen to this. I'm going to play it one time through um, to the end of the tape. And then if you want me to play it again, let me know. If you want me to go back to a certain point, let me know. At the end of which, I'm going to ask if you have an opinion concerning who you hear on the tape, OK? Yes, sir. Um, obviously, I'm talking about not the person who's speaking to the 911 operator but the noise in the background, okay? Um, maybe both, I'm not sure. There's just someone screaming outside. Okay, what's the address that they're near? 1211 Twin Trees Lane. Twin Trees Lane? Is this in your Twin Lake Town home in Sanford? Yes. Okay, and is it a male or female? It sounds like a male. And you don't know why? I don't know why. I think they're yelling help, but I don't know. Just send someone quick. Say stop. Okay. Does he look hurt to you? I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. So they're sending. So you think he's yelling help? Yes. All right. What is your <laughs> Is that the tape or very similar to the tape that you've listened to last week? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have an opinion as to whose voice that is um, screaming in the background? Yes, sir. 
based upon your knowledge of your conversations with George Zimmerman and the life experience that you've now brought to the jury, whose voice do you believe that to be screaming for help? Uh, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that is George Zimmerman. And I wish to God I did not have that ability to understand that. I think it's still morning. Good morning, Mr. Donnelly. Hello, sir. Mr. Donnelly. You recall, I took a deposition of you back, I believe it was May 9th, maybe, of this year, correct? Yes, That's sir. That's about right? Yes, sir. I think your wife was first, or maybe you were first, and then your wife, you recall oh, that? my wife was first. Okay. As it should be, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then we took yours, and it was very brief, correct? Yes, sir. You never mentioned anything about testifying, about identifying the voice, or did you? Uh, I don't believe I did, sir. Okay. I, don't believe it was asked. Uh, as I recall, everybody was hungry. <laughs> okay. So you think it was just short, or you, you didn't mention anything about that? Didn't I ask you what you were going to be testifying about? Uh, I don't believe, I don't remember being asked if I was going to testify about it. At, at the time, uh, well, through this whole thing, I, I really didn't want anything to do with the tape. Right. Okay, so you, what you're saying is after the deposition on May 9th, 2013, you said it was last Saturday that you, on purpose, listened to the tape, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and Your Honor, I have an issue, but I'll address that after we finish. So you, after the deposition and between literally last Saturday, so we're talking about like on the, I guess today's the 8th, so we're talking about the 6th is when you listen to the recording. Yes, sir. It was the it was Saturday morning. And I apologize. We're talking about last Saturday, literally. This, this last Saturday, all right. Just and, a couple and, of days ago. Right, because my recollection is in the deposition you had not listened to the recording, or really were going to testify about it. Correct. Uh, I I may have heard parts of it, but I I generally try to. I mean, I always. <laughs> Tuned it out. I walked right. away from it. it on it purpose, was, I think you said. On correct. purpose, it was very distressing. Right. To sure. Me. And so what you did is, two days ago, you on purpose listened to it to see whether you could identify the voice so you'd be able to testify in court. Correct. Uh, I listened to it uh, very purposely in a very quiet setting because I think I just needed to before sure. I came here today. All right. And I think you said you listened to it twice. Yes, sir. I understand sir. you correctly. Now, uh, if I may, why did you have to listen to it twice if you, at the first time, knew it was George Zimmerman's voice? I don't know. I just played it a second time. Just to verify it in your mind that you would be sure that you could come to court and say, absolutely? No. It, it was just an emotional okay. uh, experience for me. and I. Okay. Don't even know why I played it twice, okay. but I did. Okay. And I gather you were you made sure you were in a room setting where nobody else was present, correct? Yes. Okay. And I, I believe your wife already testified, and obviously you weren't in the courtroom when she testified. My question is, prior to listening to that tape on Saturday, had you discussed it with your wife at all what, in terms of whether she had listened to the tape at all? And I'm not saying that I was improper. I'm just saying, had you... Do you recall? Not really. I, we, we've never really tried to discuss much of anything okay. with this. All right. Um, she mentioned, or I know when we took your deposition, you had mentioned that you had given money before to the defense fund. Yes, sir, I have. And, and, I, and I think it was $2,500 at that time, correct? Uh, I 
gave a check for $2,500 for his uh, defense, and then I gave $500 to his personal website. Right, so you that was 3000 and then after that you bought him suits? Yes, sir. Okay, do you recall how much, approximately money? How much About $1,700. Okay, and then that includes ties and shirts and all that other stuff that you were asking? Yes, about. sir, they were on sale. Okay, was that a Joseph Banks? Do you want to plug wherever you bought it? No. <laughs> Did you get a good deal on those, I gather is what you're saying? Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. And and you testified because you've, you've come to court before, you, people need to appear a certain way in court properly, et cetera, correct? Yes, sir. It okay. shows respect for the system. Yes. yes, sir. And so you would agree that there's a bias there on your behalf of, of George Zimmerman, correct? Because of your friendship. He is my very dear friend. Yes, I think yes, of him sir. as a son. All right. And, and in other words, you contributed money to help his cause, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you also, as you mentioned, of clothing, et cetera. Yes, sir. Okay. So is that it in terms of uh, total? So that was, you said 3000 and then about $1,700. So that's about $4,700, give or take a little? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, other than taking food right. to his I, home. Yes, sir. I, other than that, I'm talking about monetarily or? Uh, monetarily, that, that, is, that is it, sir. Okay. All right. And then... Um, Did you listen to any other recordings, specifically the recording where George Zimmerman is speaking to the 911 non-emergency operator? Uh, I believe I heard part of that on the news. Okay. Was that about the same time, or was that recently, or, or back in February or March or April of last year? Uh, that, was, uh, that was a ways back because uh, we've tried not to watch anything. On purpose, is that correct? Yes. I, I know you're nodding your head, so uh, I knew the answer yeah. was yes, but yes, sir, and we I just know. need for the record, I know these jurors can see. I know better, too. Okay, all right. And so you, ha you have heard parts of the non-emergency, only snippets that you think, or? Probably snippets, I really okay. try not to pay too sure. much. Okay, and, and those snippets, do you recall what was said in, in the parts you heard on, on the news? Not really, sir. Okay. Um, let me do, if I want to do this, I'm going to play a recording for you if I could. Yes, sir. And for the record, that state's exhibit. What number is it? 173. 173. recognize the voice yes sir or one of the two voices right yes sir and one of them is is George Zimmerman is that correct yes sir okay So far, is that just a normal conversation you would have heard on a regular basis with Mr. Zimmerman? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now he's just staring at me. Okay, it's one 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 one. Retrieve you or one eleven? That's the clubhouse. That's the clubhouse. Do you know what the he's near the clubhouse right now? Yeah, now he's coming towards me. Okay. He's got his hand in his waistband. Yes, sir. Okay. Said something. Oh, God, these assholes, they always get away. 
Did you hear that language? You want me to play it back? Or? My, Your Honor, our, our judge is a mischaracterization of the evidence. He added words that didn't exist in the tape. Okay. Um, sustained, if you want to. Do you want me to play it back for you? Oh, can I? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you agree that based on your experience and his voice, he's a little more excited than previously? No, sir. You think he's just the same manitone, monotone? I, everybody has different tones to their okay. voice as, as they're speaking, much right. like I am now, but right. he's speaking to law enforcement and he's uh, trying to give them information. Okay. And so you had not heard that before? I hadn't heard that part before, no. Okay. And and I don't need to play the whole thing. You heard another part dealing with where he uses the words, uh, some der other derogatory words. You had not heard that before? Uh, I, I may have heard snippets of it, sir, but uh, I'm hearing I, everything pretty much fully today. Okay. Um, so you were trying to become familiar with his voice, I guess, you were already familiar with his voice, but you were trying to compare it to just the 911 recording on Saturday? Yes, sir. Okay, you didn't go back and listen to any other recordings? No. Okay, that's what I was trying to get. You you didn't compare it to any other voices that he had made prior calls or anything like that? No, sir, I didn't need to. Okay, because okay. you already knew his voice? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, all right. Now, on that recording um, that you listened to, the 911 operator, I'm sorry, the, the, they're calling it the Lauer, the one that Mr. Romero played for you. I'm not going to play it again. You know which one I'm talking about? The one yes, that you sir. listened Saturday. I apologize. Yes, sir. Okay. It was similar to the one that was played in court, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you heard the person you believe is George Zimmerman yelling, help, 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 continuously, correct? That was absolutely George Zimmerman. Right. And he was yelling, no, no doubt in your mind, you, you believe it's George Zimmerman. There's not a single doubt in my mind, sir. Okay, all right. And he was yelling over and over, help, 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 correct? Yes, and I heard others, there's like other screams, help, but the screams in particular, I, I could tell, I, I knew that that was George Zimmerman. So you heard other screams too that you weren't sure of? There was help, there was some other ones. I, those particular <clears throat> emotional Obviously, when someone is uh, in dire straits, whether it be in combat or anything else, your voice obviously changes. I've heard a 250-pound man, I mean, sound like a little girl right. screaming. And you, but before you get there, you even, you know who he is. Right, so, so you had, you believe there was some that were definitely George Zimmerman and others you heard you couldn't make out who it was. Did I understand you correctly? The voices I heard screaming and for help were George Zimmerman. There All were other them. voices up on top of that. Uh, in the tape, there's 911 operator, there's uh, other stuff, which oddly enough, I'm, familiar with because in the din of battle you have a lot of extraneous other noises going on at the same time. Other but people yelling or other people whatever speaking? Other people yelling at the okay. same time you've got small arms fire, you may have mortars, rockets, you've got people screaming, uh, but you still have the ability to pick out the ones that you have to run to as a medic. The, the ones that you're familiar with, in other words, the other people, if you weren't familiar, if some guy had shown up that day in the company and you had never heard his voice, you wouldn't be able to pick out his voice as, as, as easily as the person you're familiar with, correct? Uh, that's, that's correct, sir. Yeah. Uh, the voices that, of course, we've been together, most of us, for a period of months, uh, and we all knew Right. each other's voice and, and who it was. Right. Well, my question is, if there had been a person that had just shown up that day and, God forbid, there was a firefight out there and there was a shooting or whatever, you would not have been able, if you had never heard his voice, you wouldn't be able to pick up that person's voice. Uh, no, sir. After right. that February, we had a lot of new guys. Right. Okay. 
And in this case, the only voice you're able to pick out is George Zimmerman's voice, correct? The voice screaming on the tape is absolutely George Zimmerman, okay. sir. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a matter to bring up to the court, and we can do it. I don't know if there's a chance to finish the examination. I didn't know if it had to do with before that or not, so. I think we can do it right after. But okay. Any redirect? Please, Your Honor. Just to clear, as you listen to the 911 tape, I thought you were saying that some of the screams were. Objection as to leading? Staying. When you listen to the 911 tape, were all of these screams that you heard, those that said help and those that were just screaming, was that all from George Zimmerman? Yes, sir. Okay. Then there were other, other voices like the 911 operator, Ms. Lauer, and others. But the background noise, who, was it one person or was it more than one person in the background? That was one person. I, it was easy for me just based on my past experiences is very easy for me that was george zimmerman okay and did you ever discuss with your wife um this non-emergency call no sir okay. um you had listened to this tape on saturday two days ago yes sir when did you um contact me I believe I called you Saturday afternoon. Right after you had done this? Yes, sir. Was that the first time they were talked about um, your testifying regarding the 911 call at all? Yes, sir. Um, was that a difficult decision for you to make? Extremely. Was it an emotional conversation um, that you and I had regarding having to deal with this issue? Yes, sir. Are you coloring or changing your testimony at all simply to help Mr. Zimmerman in what you might perceive to be a time of need? Not at all, sir. This courtroom is about truth. At some point in time, even though this is personally very hard for me, this is the place truth is supposed to come out. Is that why you decided to deal with whatever demons existed from 45 years ago and still testify concerning this event and those events here today? Yes. Nothing further, Your Honor? Whose idea was it to listen to the recording Saturday? It was my own, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. May Mr. Donnelly be excused? Mr. Donnelly. Well, thank you very much, sir. You are excused. Counsel, approach the bench. John Donnelly finishing his testimony, the husband of uh, Leanne Benjamin, who just testified as to their friendship. But this was a veteran.